Hey friends, um, John Nord here again. I'm going to show you a, a little video here uh, on a trophy style buckle uh, such as this one here that I have drawn out. Um, sometimes you want to put some beaded uh, decorations around the edges or all the way around, something like that. These be beads are usually uh, larger than what they sell at the jeweler's supplies so you have to make them and I'm going to show you uh, most of you probably know how to make them but I'm going to show you a little trick of uh, putting them together and uh, makes it a little simpler and as you can see here I've got uh, two four of them are the same size and one of them here is a uh, a lot larger. To start with, uh, I take a disc cutter like this here, and uh, on this is uh, making the larger one. Uh, cut a five sixteenths disc uh, with a cutter, uh, and I cut them out of a twenty two gauge sterling. I've already cut one out of right here. You can use a lot of your scrap up for this. Um, you can be surprised how small a piece you can get a disc out of. After you cut it out, you know, as a lot of you know, you get a real small disc like this. And then I take a uh, Doman block and I put it right here in the uh, hole and I've already figured out what size domer I need in this case it's a number seven but uh, what size domer I need to make the right size disc that I want and I just center that up in there As you can see I've got a bead now and this bead is the approximate size of the large decoration on the buckle. I've got a piece of uh, this buckle particular buckle is going to be uh, uh, eighth inch nickel silver decorated and these are sterling silver uh, decorations. This is basically the buckle uh, piece I cut out of eighth inch nickel silver and uh, when you put this design on here I have a uh, room around the outside edge of it so after I get all this stuff soldered on it I take my uh, scroll my jeweler saw and I cut up next to all the beads around it. That way it makes it that real nice scallop design that hugs those beads. Uh, here's a group of beads that I've already put together and as you can see they'll just go in the corners and after they're soldered on there in the, in the proper position on this blank I'll just saw around the outside edge to uh, edge the buckle all the way around. I've got some flat uh, rope, uh, it's not really rope, it's uh, what I did is I took some 10 gauge round uh, sterling silver wire, I annealed it and I rolled it through my uh, mill, flattening one side and half doming the other side. And that is what will make up these outer borders it will go in between the uh, beads all the way around but that's another story what I wanted to show you today is just how to put these beads together because I've tried these before where I set all the individual little beads on there and uh, then try to get them each and every one soldered together and they move around and everything and you wind up with a bunch of crooked ones but the way I do it, I figured out doing it, and some of you may already know this, 
uh, you can see how real flat they are. They came out real nice. I've got 70% uh, solder in between these beads. 70% silver. I'm going to solder the beads on with 56%. So these won't come apart while I'm trying to solder them to the buckle blank. Anyway, I've come up with a little jig. I took some uh, 14 gauge copper because copper it takes a lot more heat on copper than silver uh, to heat up copper and that's been my experience and so this the solder is not going to stick to the copper because I'm not going to get it hot enough plus these beads are only 22 gauge so and this is 14 gauge so what I do is I, I glued this pattern this outer pattern onto my copper and then I sawed it out to make that little sawtooth design and that helps me arrange the loose beads on the fire brick over here and I'll show you how that works okay there's two things that help with this uh, wide out and uh, just to be safe I paint white out along the edges of this copper scallops on both sides in case I do get some solder on it uh, the solder won't stick to the copper because we don't want it stuck to the copper it's just a jig Also, I use this fire scoff. Um, it's a ceramic flux coating, and once I get the beads up to 400 degrees, I just spray it on. That way, I don't have to sit there with paste flux and flux each and every individual bead. So I'll show you how that works. I've also got a, a smaller tip. It's a number two on my torch and I've got my 70% solder uh, in some uh, forceps and I've got a pair of uh, tweezers just to move them around with and I've got a little bit of water here so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to just put this here we're going to take the large bead first we're going to put it right there I'm going to put the next one right in beside it. This little jig just helps you arrange them in the right uh, radius. Got something under this one. There's a little. I'm going to get another one here. probably should uh, lightly sand the bottom of these to make them real flat. I had a little burr on that one which I'll have to sand off. But you want them sitting flat down. Okay, now they're arranged in that pattern. Which this is our pattern. And these are some I've already done. And you can see how they fit right on my pattern. So we're going to make these like these. We don't have any flux on them right now. I'm going to start out by just uh, moving around 
kind of heating the fire brick up. When these beads start getting a little bit of color to them, I'll spray the fire scoff on them. Also, I have a uh, Italian pick here, a solder pick. Just in case one gets out of line, I can just kind of scoot it back in. Take the fire scoff. That puts us the flux on there that we need to solder them. We're going to put a little drop of solder right between the first two beads. Okay, you can see there I've got a little too much solder on there. I'll show you how to correct that. Okay, we've got it uh, over here. I'm going to scoot it over. A little more flux on it. There we go. It went down to it. There. Now you can see that you can see they're all soldered together. Now a while ago when I put some solder here it ran up on this bead and it ran up on this bead and that was because these were, were one, one or the other was hotter than the other one. You want to try to keep your temperature uniform and you want to put as least a little solder in here you can. Uh, so I had solder sitting up here and I had solder sitting up here. Put some more uh, flux on it. I heated this one, uh, the one that didn't have the solder on it, and it ran down to it and touched this one. You can control that solder with your flame and you can make it follow that flame. To, it's going to go to the hottest point. So I, I was able to to pull it on down in here. These are real flat though, they're sitting on the tile brick flat. What we're going to do is take it over here to the bench and we're going to cut this down a little bit and I'll show you how to detail them a little bit because they kind of joined up a little heavy there. Um, these are some I've already detailed. They didn't, they weren't uh, soldered up that quite that bad but uh, I took my uh, blue wheel and I cut down in here to kind of shape that solder so uh, and get it to get it off of the uh, the beads in there so we're going to put this in the water cool it off a little bit There we go, and we'll take it over here and work on it. 
Okay, I'm going to show you, uh, as you saw over there, we had a little bit heavier bead in here than what uh, I like. I like a little, just a little drop in there. It's not too bad, but I'm going to uh, show you how if you get a, a big old bridge in here and not uh, a fine detail, I'm going to show you how to correct it. And I just take a file and I kind of make a cut through there shape it through there like so and then I take my uh, silicon wheel and I make sure that I have a knife edge on it and to get a knife edge on these you can use these little diamond uh, stones and run it on them anyway I just kind of uh, take that and cut through there and kind of finesse that solder on the edges that climbed up on the domes or the beads and I cut through there it makes a kind of a cut you can see how it makes a, a, the detail a little bit better you can actually take this silicon wheel and uh, rub that solder off of these beads if there's any unwanted solder that you don't want in there like so And that's how you fix it so you can see that this makes it a lot easier you can take these and of course I'll have a drawing on here where I'll know how to arrange them but you can take these and just stick them on here and put your flat, uh, flat strap in between them and have all this clamped on there and then solder everything on at once with uh, 56 percent or you can use 65 but anyway it makes it real easy because these aren't getting all out of line and you might want to take some sandpaper before you put them on the buckle and just uh, kind of hold them flat on flat surface and do this that makes make sure you don't have any burrs on the back side that way they sit real flat so your your solder will work real good but you can see here if I line all these up on top of each other they're pretty uniform and that's because of the jig so that's gonna make them look good on the buckle they're not gonna be all over the place that's the purpose of soldering them all together like this so it's just a tip uh, so that's just a tip to help you out on these trophy buckles uh, make uh, make them uh, more decorative uh, you got those big beads in the corners and some people put them on the tops and the centers of the sides uh, just something to, to dress them up a little bit better I know there's a lot of buckle makers out there that already know this and probably have some uh, even some different methods from me. This is the way I learned to do it and uh, I'm mainly making this for the beginners so they can kind of see how we do things. So anyway, uh, try this out. I bet it'll help you. Thanks and be sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, there'll be more videos coming in the future. Thanks.